everybody, I am back again with another interesting budget gaming computer video. I found this guy on the Facebook Marketplace and I tried to get it for cheaper, but someone already beat me with a lower offer, so I went ahead and offered to pick it up for the seller's full asking price of $200. For those of you that don't know, this is from the iBuyPower Desktop PC Arc series. And this particular model sells for about $550 brand new, and the cheapest I could find it on the internet was for $530. Now $500 is usually a mid-range budget for PC builders as well as computer gaming in general. But on this channel, that's actually quite a bit of money to be spending since we know how much performance we can get from sub $300 budget videos like I've shown in the past. So is this thing worth it? It's not. For the processor, this computer has the AMD FX 6300, which is actually still a good enough processor for gaming. While it's definitely a dated piece of hardware, the six core processor is actually not the root of our problem. For the RAM, this computer has one eight gigabyte stick of DDR3 clocked at 1600 megahertz by A data. Like I mentioned before, this is a dated piece of hardware, but eight gigabytes is plenty for gaming, whether you are using DDR3 or DDR4 memory. As for the drive, it's a 500 gigabyte HDD from Toshiba, which actually has pretty decent boot times considering its age. It's definitely not the worst thing I've worked with inside of a gaming PC, but we all know that your drive actually has little to do with your gaming experience anyways. Now for the graphics card, this computer has an R7 250 by power color. It has two gigabytes of GDDR5, a memory bus width of 128 bits, and it has a clock speed of 800 megahertz. Now those specs actually aren't that bad with the exception of the clock speed being particularly low. Now while the specs really aren't that bad, the graphics card is ultimately the reason that this computer can't game that well. To make this simple, low profile graphics cards or other cards that don't require a six or eight pin power connector typically suck, with the exception of a few models of a 750 Ti, a 1030, a 1050, or a 1050 Ti. But for the most part, they just don't have enough power to do a good enough job. So why would a company who's asking more than $500 for you mass produce computers with a bad graphics card? Number one, they wanna make money. I buy power as a business and ultimately they need to save money wherever they can by buying cheaper parts while still being able to produce a product that people are willing to buy at a profitable price point. Number two, the power supply in this computer is trash. Not only is it not 80 plus certified, but it doesn't even come with a six or eight pin PCIe power connector. So if I wanted to replace the graphics card in this thing, I'd actually have to buy another power supply as well. I've already mentioned in the past how bad power supplies like this can be for your computer. So if you ever see one of these silver unpainted IEDs in your rig, go ahead and throw it out and just buy a new one immediately. Number three, they understand a very real truth that exists in the market for PC gaming. If it looks cool, they'll buy it. I can tell you from experience, I've had a much easier time selling computers that had LED lights and tempered glass compared to ones that didn't. For example, in the last two computer budget videos I've shown you, the one that cost me $250 took me four weeks to sell for $350, and the one that cost me $300 took me six hours to sell for 400. The sad part is, is that the cheaper computer actually got 15% better performance in games. That same principle applies here when you look at this case. The best part about this system is actually its case, not only for its functionality, but for its aesthetic. It has three HDD slots and three SSD slots. I've had computer cases I paid $75 for that didn't come with three SSD slots. And the top inside part of this case actually comes with two 120 millimeter fan mounts that you could use for additional cooling or to set up cool RGB light fans if you wanted to. Plus the metal of this case is actually not that flimsy compared to other cheaper cases that I've worked with in the past. But anyways, that's enough praise for iBuyPower. Let's get to the good stuff. How do we fix this thing? Well, with a couple deals that I picked up locally as well as online, we can actually still upgrade this system and be able to sell it for a profit.
So as you can see, $60 worth of upgrades made a huge difference. We were able to double and even triple our performances in certain categories, and in most games we played, we were able to turn up the settings and still get significantly higher frame rates. So I would say that we successfully fixed this gaming PC. And a side note, while I would never buy an iBuyPower or CyberPower PC, these pre-builds actually make for a very good starting point to upgrade if you can find them for cheap on the used market. As you saw here today, there's obviously plenty of room for improvement inside these systems. So if you're in the used market to get something for yourself or for a family member, don't completely knock these things if you have a little bit of know-how. You can definitely turn these things into a good purchase and salvage them and make them similar to what we're seeing here today. It's definitely a lot easier than trying to build something from scratch piece by piece. Anyways, I had a ton of fun making this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did. And as always, I hope you guys have a great day.